All right, it's day 52, and as you can see, there are big changes. The oldest plant is dying, so I'm not quite sure what happened. Maybe I didn't water enough too deeply where the roots are for this one. And anyway, it's dead, uh, or I don't think it's making a comeback. I did water heavily yesterday. I didn't do any filming yesterday, but I poured enough water to saturate the entire ground. Out of the four very large seedlings, this one is very promising. It has a very large first true leaf already. It's working on a second true leaf. The cotyledons are still fine. And you know, if you look at the other ones, it's a similar process. Let me see if I can move this. Yeah, so there's a... Uh, that one's the second most well-developed. Maybe this is the third. No, uh, maybe I'd say this is the third. But they're all doing pretty well, and I would say, you know, because they've had optimal growth conditions well maybe not optimal optimal would be in you know later in spring with better sunlight throughout the day but this will do for now it seems to be very good everything seems to be developing very very quickly so there's another seedling here it's coming along nicely and I expect it to be in the same kind of shape this plant is a goner you know it's got that very very thin thread there was once a root connecting the cotyledons in the soil. I think the cotyledons have sort of split apart too. It's basically a goner. Uh, this is a new seedling that popped up yesterday. So in basically less than 24 hours, it's developed pretty well. I think the watering may have shifted the soil. I think the watering may have shifted the soil around a little bit. So you see the two roots have formed a fork. You know, I don't know if I'd call this an algal infestation, but there's a lot of algae here. I'm not sure that it's mold. I'm pretty pretty sure there's some kind of algae. There's a fair bit of algae growth in some places, and I'm not sure what to do with that. You know, there's still a little bit of mold growth on select seed husks that I think may be dead or just dormant. So I'll spray some Lysol on the surface and I'll, you know, do some spray watering for those uh, inverted plants or the very young ones that are sort of vulnerable, but it's day 54. I didn't do any recording on day 53, but as you can see, there are very, very large changes. The first true leaf of this seedling is now well over one inch, and it's about an inch wide. This cotyledon of the same plant is one and three eighths of an inch long, and about 11 sixteenths of an inch wide. So this seedling, which I just measured, has a shorter stem, which I believe is a benefit. That means it doesn't fall over and get all sloppy and becomes prone to breaking. Um, these are much, much longer. This particular seedling has a very, very long stem. And this one had a lot of uh, phototropism exhibited earlier. And it's basically just lip resting on the side of the glass bowl. This current fast grower also has a pretty well-developed second true leaf. So it's already way surpassed the performance of that original plant. If you look at it, it's pretty much withered away and dying. And I attribute most of this due to the early dual isopropanol washes. Um, it seemed to have stagnated in growth a long time ago and exposing it to the sun helped it a little bit, but I believe the isopropanol serves as a potent herbicide. So um, I don't know if it would work against thick wooden stems and roots, but uh, for seedlings it definitely kills them. So for this inverted seedling, it has its own troubles, you know, it has a first leaf developing. The seed husk is still on, so development is by no means normal. Uh, the stem is curved because it was inverted for so long. And this root ball has been sending out secondary roots, uh, lateral roots in all directions to try to get to the soil, but Whenever the shoot system grows, it pushes the root system further up, so it basically can't establish a foothold, and it's really only been surviving because I've been spraying this with so much water all the time. Um, this other seedling here is basically a goner, and this one's a goner too. It just can't survive like this. This particular seedling showed a lot of promise, but as it grew, it shifted, you know, after I watered with a basically by pouring, which I promised not to do for a long time, but had to because the bottom of the bowl was dry. You know, the roots were exposed to air and there's two roots that touch the soil and you know, it's just a few millimeters away, but that's enough to dry them out. So the roots are very susceptible early on to drying due to air contact. 
So this seedling is in all likelihood going to die. I'm not going to intervene. So this is the new position of the day for this bowl. I want it to be like this so the shoot systems are all facing away from this LED light which generates most of the phototropic reaction which is basically the reaction these plants have to light which is to grow faster on the stems away from the light so they bend towards the, the light. So literally within hours I can always see that these seedlings uh, are growing towards this direction towards the light. So these seedling stalks are about as robust as I've ever seen in this entire experiment. This one in particular has a very robust stem. So it's currently 1.23 p.m. and as you can see this is my balcony. If you go down here, uh, the light's coming in. I got an empty pot there. I've got some soil on the balcony. But it takes until about, I don't know, maybe 2.30 or so, or close to even 3, for the sun to reach over here at this angle. And basically what that means is these plants only get about 90 plus minutes of sunlight a day. It's not optimal, but it's still very cold outside these days. If I were to open this lighting window, you know, cold air would rush in. It's abnormally cold this year, uh, this winter in San Diego, uh, because many Arctic fronts have come in. So I'm not in a rush to transplant these seedlings out into a pot outside, say that one, because first of all, it's too cold and I'm worried that the plants will get damaged. You know, another thing is I'm still thinking about which, you know, vessel I should transplant these into. And if I do so, I want these uh, seedlings to be a lot more robust. I want to see, you know, really thick stems and roots because I don't want to damage everything in and risk killing them all by doing a transplant. So I'm going to wait until these plants are a little tougher. Okay, it's 4 p.m. and I've made sort of a reflector out of aluminum foil. It's very primitive, but it gives these plants some extra sunlight and warmth. Okay, it's day 55. And as you can see, the five major seedlings are growing at a very fast pace. Four seedlings that are older are developing very quickly. Their first two leaves are becoming very large. But this plant with a short stem is developing by far the best. It's working on a second true leaf, and that's coming along nicely. The first true leaf is already much larger than the cotyledons. It's larger than any leaf we've had so far in this experiment. At this point, I would say this first true leaf is 1.8 inches long and 1.4 inches wide without uh, unfolding it completely. I'm just taking rough measurements with a tape measure. The underside of this bowl has a lot more roots than it used to, and the soil was getting dry, so a few hours ago I used a, kind of a gentle pouring to water the soil. And at first it appeared to be a little bit flooded, but the water's receded since then, and I think that means um, these roots in the last few hours have uptaken most of that water. So the demand for water is a lot stronger than it used to be. So lost under the canopy is this inverted seedling that has the starfish shaped, you know, root ball that's been trying to find its way into the soil and get water. So by pouring and watering the soil, I shifted the soil around a little bit. Most of this curled stem is inverted and it's uh, under the soil right now, but the cotyledons still haven't broken free. But that's probably okay because this first true leaf and a second true leaf are starting to develop. So obviously all these structures would be a lot bigger if the plant were never inverted. But uh, I'm not going to aid this plant and move it to a less crowded location. I'm just going to leave it here and see what happens. I think this one is a goner. The cotyledons have separated. It's basically just waiting to die. This was one of the original plants that lasted the longest and I'm gonna to have to remove that later on. So you can see some roots near the seed. Um, there are similar conditions elsewhere where it looks promising. Maybe some more new growth can occur elsewhere in the bowl away from the other seedlings. There's a small seedling appearing underneath another larger established seedling and basically in previous days the roots had become exposed to the air and were starting to dry out but now that I've watered everything by flooding this thing has uh, re-established itself seemingly so I expect this one to have a good chance of uh, recovering and becoming a very large plant over the next few days.